Welcome to your Grafana Cloud portal. You can always access your Grafana Cloud portal by going to grafana.com and then in the top right hand corner, click my account. If you don't see my account, you're going to see login, in which case you can click and then log into grafana.com using the email and password that the account associated with that user has. Then you'll be rerouted here into this portal. Once you're here, you'll notice in the top left a drop down that will give you all of the different organizations that this particular user or email address is associated with. You can think of your user and your email address as one and the same. You can be a part of multiple organizations with the same user or email. In this case, my user is part of one org, the cloud demo org. If you want to change your user settings, by the way, you can click over on user settings on the right hand side, and that will allow you to do a few different things. One is to associate a first and a last name with your username. It'll allow you to change your username, also your email, and even create an avatar for your user, which will be shared among all of the Grafana Cloud orgs that you're a part of and will show in any Grafana instances. You can also change your password here and see all the different orgs that you're a part of as well on the left hand side. Let's go back to the portal. You'll also notice that the account here is on trial. In fact, I just started a trial because it has 14 days left. If I click on upgrade now, I'm taken to my manage subscription page. From here, I can choose to upgrade to the Grafana Cloud Pro tier. It shows me here everything that's included in that tier and also how it compares to the free tier on the left. If at the end of the 14 days I've not upgraded to Pro, then I'll be downgraded into this free tier and beholden to the limitations and inclusions of free. If at any point after that I want to upgrade to Pro, I can always go back to the Manage Subscriptions page and the upgrade button will always be there. You can also get a customized advanced plan over here. This is essentially a plan that our sales team can put together, customized for you as an annual contract. And you're welcome to contact them by clicking the contact us button here. Now let's head back. Here on the landing page, you'll always find the components that make up your Grafana stack. You will automatically get one stack whenever you open your Grafana Cloud account at the start of your free pro trial. I was asked to name my first stack when I first opened the account. You can have up to three total stacks on the pro tier and are limited to a single stack on the free tier. During the trial phase, you're still limited to one stack, as you'll see on the tooltip on the left hand side when you hover over the button that says add stack, where an additional stack is disabled. But again, if you upgrade to pro, you'll be able to create up to two additional stacks for a total of three. Each stack has these six components in the center. We'll start with the Grafana itself. The Grafana is your Grafana software on Grafana Cloud. This is where all the magic happens. Your URL will always be your stack name .grafana.net. Over here, you have your Prometheus instance. That's your hosted Prometheus endpoint associated with this stack on Grafana Cloud. If you click send metrics, you'll be taken to the details page for this Prometheus instance, which will give you everything you need to send your metrics to that endpoint. You'll see the remote write URL path, the username for your Prometheus instance, and a way to generate the API key that you'll need to authorize that remote write. You can always find that here on the left menu as well. But the most useful bit is going to be down here in the Prometheus remote write configuration snippet, which you can just copy to your clipboard. It already includes the path that you need, the instance ID, and a placeholder where you'll include the API key once it's generated. What you do with the snippet is paste it into either the Grafana agent's YAML file or your local Prometheus's YAML file to authorize them to ship those metrics to Grafana Cloud. If you've not installed either of these locally, you'll need to do so and set it to scrape your metrics targets first. Once the YAML is configured to remote write to this endpoint, voila, your metrics will be shipped and hosted at Grafana Cloud and available to query from the Grafana interface that we saw a minute ago and that's associated with this same stack. Loki, our hosted logs endpoint, is similar. Clicking on send metrics there will take you to its details page, which also provides a snippet, which you can again copy to your clipboard. You'll see here that it shows the instance ID for your Loki instance, a placeholder for an API key, which you'll need to generate, and it already includes the Grafana Cloud Loki URL path. You can define the scrape configs, rename the job names, and make sure to point the prompt tail to collect to the correct path on your service where your logs live. Just as with Prometheus, you'll be pasting the snippet to the YAML file of either a Grafana agent, which already comes with the official Loki collector called Promtail built in, 
or on a standalone prom tail installation, all with the end result of shipping your logs to the hosted Loki endpoint on Grafana Cloud. With Graphite, you'll work with Carbon Relay NG to get your Graphite metrics over to our hosted Graphite endpoint. With hosted alerting, that part of your stack, you'll be able to build and host your own alerting and recording rules with a Grafana UI or just upload rules and alert definitions from an external alert manager you may already have set up. And with Tempo, our hosted traces endpoint, you'll similarly be using the Grafana agent and a copy and paste snippet provided in the details page to start collecting traces from a local tracing instrumentation service like Jaeger or OpenTelemetry, and then shipping those traces to Grafana Cloud. Let's finish by showing you the rest of the menu options in your portal. This section here will just note any Grafana Enterprise Annual Contracted License you may have purchased. This is the kind of license that would open up your Grafana to enterprise plugins like Oracle, New Relic, or Snowflake. But if you haven't purchased that, you can ignore it. As I mentioned, here's how to create your Grafana.com API keys. When you open this, you'll notice a series of default API keys that we've created for you already. These are what connect different internal services in your stack to each other, like your hosted Prometheus endpoint to your Grafana, Graphite, Loki, etc. Now, if you want to connect some external services to those Grafana Cloud endpoints, you'll want to create a new API key to authorize those. So you'll click on Add API Key. Then you can name it and designate the permissions role you want to give that API key. If you're trying to send metrics logs or traces to a Grafana Cloud endpoint, you'll want to use either the admin or metrics publisher level permissions for the API key you create. Then over here, you can also click on Open a Ticket in the left-hand menu. You'll select the type of support issue you'd like to discuss, the subject, and below explain what happened, what you were expecting to happen, and how to reproduce the problem, in particular if it's a technical problem. You can also add screenshots of the issue, which are always helpful, and here you can check off if you will allow our support team to access your Grafana instance in order to troubleshoot the issue, in particular if the issue you're having is within the Grafana interface itself. In the tickets page, you'll be able to see a history of all the tickets you've opened, past or present, and see their status and most recent replies. Over on the Manage Subscription page, you'll again see a breakdown of the different tiers, which we saw before. Down in the My Plugins and My Dashboards on the left-hand side, don't worry about this unless you actually created plugins or dashboards and uploaded them into our public plugins or dashboard repositories. These two pages here do not reflect the plugins or dashboards you've added to the Grafana in your account. They only show you plugins or dashboards that you are the public creator for. Over here on the members page, you're gonna see how you can invite members to your organization. That's myself, I'm the administrator, and I will click on add member if I want to invite someone else to be an org member. I'm going to invite them via an email address and I'm going to designate the kind of permissions role I'd like them to have. You can find out what each of these roles means by looking in our Grafana Cloud documentation and searching for cloud roles. You can also designate if you want them to receive billing emails or not. Remember that this person will have to accept the invitation via email. If they already have a Grafana Cloud user associated with that email, then they'll just be able to um, add the added to your org along with any other orgs that they're already a member of. However, if they don't have a Grafana Cloud user yet, then they'll need to create a Grafana Cloud user account, and then they will be added as a member of the org you've invited them to and show up on this page where they'll be able to access any of the stacks in the org with the permissions that you gave them. Finally, you have your settings for the org itself. Here's where you can designate the first and last name of the, and the billing information associated with your org and which will be reflected on all your future invoices. Once you become a pro user, you'll also see your invoices uploaded to a section called invoices that will appear on the left-hand side here. And you can also, on this page, add an avatar to be linked to your org. And that's the little avatar change that's gonna show on the top left-hand side there. And well, that's your Grafana Cloud Portal.